2017. This is a voting meeting of the Prescott City Council. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, do you have any introduction? Uh, yes, sir, I do. I'd like to uh, welcome Councilman Elect Bill Good and Councilwoman Elect Alexa. Thank you for joining us today. And I thought I saw earlier Mayor Mangarelli, yes, but I don't see him now. So having said that, I've welcomed them all. Thank you. Our invocation today will be by Reverend Diane Dixon. Apparently uh, the Reverend didn't show up or had to leave because we're a little late, so I apologize for that. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Blair. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Oberg? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Lamerson? Here. Councilman Blair? Present. Councilman Lizelle? Here. Councilwoman Orr? Here. Councilman Sishka? Here. Councilwoman Wilcox? <coughs> Here. All are present. <coughs> Thank you. Um, we have announcements by the city manager, and he's not here, so I wonder if the city attorney has anything he wants to say. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, had more on our plate today than we thought we had, and uh, we're starting a little late, and I apologize for that. Uh, we'll try and move through this as quickly as we can today. Uh, we'll move on to proclamations. 7A, please. Small Business Saturday. Oh, could I please have the chamber representatives come on up? And it's time to go shopping. Mayor, we always have time to go shopping, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you all for being here. And thank all of you in the audience for being here as well. Proclamation, Small Business Saturday, November the 25th, 2017. Whereas the government, of Prescott, the government of Prescott, Arizona, celebrates our local small businesses and the contributions they make to our local economy and community. According to the U.S. Small Business Administration, there are currently 28.8 million small businesses in the United States, <coughs> and they represent 99.7% of all businesses with employees in the U.S. And they're responsible for 63% of net new jobs created over the past 20 years. Whereas small business employ 48% of employees, and whereas 91% of all consumers believe that supporting small independently owned restaurants and bars is important, and 76% of all consumers plan to go to one or more small businesses as part of their holiday shopping. Prescott, Arizona supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our economy, and preserve our neighborhoods. Advocacy groups such as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. The Prescott Chamber of Commerce has partnered with the Daily Courier for the last eight years to locally promote Small Business Saturday. Now therefore, Harry B. Oberg, Mayor of the City of Prescott, hereby proclaims November the 25th, 2017, as Small Business Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council folks. Um, first of all, if everyone behind me can please just say your name and company real quick. Todd Mason, Prescott Chamber. Leland Moreno Hilburn, Fire Sky Real Estate. Bobette Sanchez, Fire Sky Real Estate. Ray Sola, Man at Leisure. Robert Coombs, Prescott Chamber. Jerry Weintraub, Samson Stalls, and Sue. Very good. And we just want to remind everyone that we will have the local, the shop local coupon books at the Visitor Information Center. So there's a lot of discounts for November 25th. And it'll be a great day for us to be out in Prescott and shop locally. And this really also kicks in with our Shop Prescott shop start Prescott. here. So there you go. There we go. Yes, thank you, thank Sherry. You. And I, I'm glad Sherry mentioned that. And I hope as you go about town, you'll see those small emblems that say Shop Prescott start here. And please start there. 
and please shop Prescott. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Move on 7B. 60th anniversary year of the modern Arizona Rangers. The good guys wear the white hats. Where's your hat, Lizelle? Yeah. What are you guys doing? Come on up. Spread out. How you doing? Okay, this is the official 60th anniversary year of the modern Arizona Rangers. Whereas the law enforcement organization known as the Territorial Arizona Rangers was created by Arizona Territorial Governor Nathan Oakes Murphy and established in law by the 21st Legislative Assembly on March 21st, 1901, not 2001. Uh, whereas the Arizona Rangers were first and sometimes the only line of defense for the residents of Arizona Territory, putting their lives in the line just as, just as peace officers do today for citizens in this great state of Arizona. And whereas the Territorial Arizona Rangers were disbanded on February 15, 1909, only to be reestablished by the surviving original Territorial Rangers uh, in November of 1957, as an outstanding volunteer organization that is still dedicated to public safety, to the welfare of the citizens, and to the preservation of the history of the original, or original Rangers. And whereas the current Arizona Rangers consist of caring neighbors and friends who have an unselfish devotion to the ideals and values that have always made Arizona great, and who volunteer countless hours through their many Arizona Ranger companies, by providing valuable assistance to law enforcement agencies across the state in operations of search and rescue, disaster mitigation, traffic and crowd control, DUI, ta DUI task force, and assisting when, when one of Arizona's finest has made an ultimate sacrifice. And, the, and whereas the Arizona Rangers provide time, energy, and financial resources for a madrid of youth activities and charitable events that depend on the services of these dedicated men and women, and whereas the Arizona Rangers serve as a consistent reminder of the traditions and honor of the Arizona's original heroes by keeping alive our rich and colorful her Western heritage, while at the same time serving as models of unmatched patriotism for our state and our nation. Now therefore, I, Harry O'Berg, Mayor, er Mayor of Prescott, do hereby proclaim November 2017 as the official 60th anniversary Year of the Modern Arizona Rangers. We'd like to thank the uh, Prescott City Council and Prescott Mayor for honoring the Arizona Rangers, the uh, modern day Rangers. Like I say, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary. The original territorial Rangers that uh, we follow and we represent were from 1901 to 1909. And they were pretty much the reason why Arizona became a state in 1912 instead of 1948 like some other states did. Uh, there was quite a problem in Arizona with uh, lawlessness and the big shots in Washington said that you can't become a state until you clean up the lawlessness and Arizona becomes a civilized territory. And that was how the Rangers were founded in 1901. And it took them seven years, 11 months and 22 days and they did straighten out the state. And three years later then we became a state. Once again, we'd like to thank the City Council, Mayor Oberg, and uh, for this proclamation. We appreciate it very much. Seven Z. America Recycles Day.
who's going to help me with this? All right, it's our solid waste division. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the proclamation, America Recycles Day, November 15th, 2017. That's tomorrow. <coughs> Each year, the United States generates more than 258 million tons of municipal solid waste. That's more than four pounds per person per day. Wow, I'd like to lose that. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, our nation has reached an overall recycling rate of 34.6%. Each year, our national recycling rate sends 89 million tons of material to a useful second life instead of the landfill, saves the amount of energy is consumed by over 10 million U.S. households in a year, and avoids greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to removing more than 38 million cars from our roads. But much, much more can be done. Whereas, to focus the nation's attention on the importance of recycling, businesses, industries, government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and individuals have joined together to celebrate America Recycles Day and are encouraging friends, neighbors, and coworkers to pledge to learn more about recycling options in their community and commit to recycling more materials every day of the year. And whereas participating in America Recycles Day 2017 is one way citizens can help raise awareness about the many environmental and economic benefits of reducing waste by reusing, recycling, <coughs> and buying recycled content <coughs> products. And whereas, Prescott leaders can also use this as an opportunity to spread the word about the excellent recycling programs that have been established, the types of materials that can be recycled in the city, and the importance of buying recycled products. Now, therefore, I, Harry B. Oberg, Mayor of the City of Prescott, Arizona, do hereby proclaim November 15th, 2017 as America Recycles Day and urge all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the environmental and economic benefits of recycling. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody to uh, participate not only tomorrow in America Recycles Day, but every day of the year. So thank you, uh, Mayor Oberg and the City Council. I don't know about you, but my right recycling can fills up way faster than the trash can. And I hope that is true for everyone else. That's the way it should be. Right, Will? Right. Thank you. Thank you. A day presentation. Guns and Hoses Golf Tournament presentation. Sure, they're all hoses. Where's the guns? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Oberg and Council, for giving us this opportunity to be here today to present these checks. I'm going to pass the microphone and let everyone introduce themselves. Nate Malm, Prescott Fire. Alan Snyder, Prescott Fire. Eddie Shelfoon, Prescott Fire. Uh, Craig Schmidt, Prescott Fire, and I also serve as the chairperson of the Prescott Firefighters Charities. I'm a home <coughs> Casa Police Explorer. Matthew Glossary, uh, Prescott Police Explorer. Nick, Sp Nick Spies, Prescott Police Explorer. Jessica Bellion, Prescott Police. And my name is Sherry Hanna. And um, the Guns and Hoses tournament I established four years ago in honor of my late husband, who was John Hanna Sr., uh, was Prescott policeman and former Prescott City Councilman. And when I established the golf tournament, I wanted to do something in his honor to um, benefit the program, the Prescott Police Explorers, that he loved so much. And he had many friends in the Prescott Fire Department. So. Um, the Prescott Firefighter Charities was an easy program to pick. 
and uh, every year we we take the um, donations from the whole sponsorships, raffle prizes, and um, donations, and we split them between these two organizations to help to help them further the things that they that they do. And when I started the tournament, um, I want to you know. Um, commend Antelope Pills too because they and Billy Casper Golf they go out of their way to help me make this a tournament a success every year and so this year again we raised six thousand dollars to be split between the Prescott Firefighter Charities and the Prescott Police Explorer program and I want to thank members of the council Mr. Blair, Mr. Shiska, Mr. Lamerson, Council Moore and Greg Lazell for all they all support the tournament every year and it's a big help to me. So thank you. So Prescott Firefighter Charities, Prescott Police Explorer. Thank you. Oh, we want to present the Hannah family with a plaque because, like I said, this has been year in and out, year out that they've uh, shown incredible generosity and support to, to our charities and helps us to make a difference in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Nice haircut. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Nice haircut. Thank you. Not a girl, Sherry. B. Reauthorization of FAA National Airspace System. <coughs> Mayor Oberg and members of the council, I'm Stacy Howard. I'm the regional representative for the National Business Aviation Association. And I'd like to talk to you today about the FAA reauthorization and the legislation pending before our Congress in Washington, D.C. Prescott Airport is such an important player in the economy of Prescott. I knew that the council would be interested in knowing more about the FAA reauthorization and the funding of our air traffic control program. The National Business Aviation Association was founded in 1947 when a number of businessmen decided to use uh, post-World War II uh, aircraft and convert them for business use. And we have evolved now from those beginnings to over 11,500 companies who are members of NBAA. These companies use general aviation aircraft, corporate aircraft, to further their business, to make it more competitive and more profitable. <coughs> the FAA, as a federal agency, has to be reauthorized periodically, and it has to be funded regularly through the budget. Right now, the Airport and Airways Trust Fund is funded through an assortment of taxes on fuel taxes, Jet A and uh, Avgas tax, a ticket tax for uh, tickets that you buy on the airlines, taxes on cargo, and an international tax for international flights. These taxes fund about 76% of the FAA's budget. And the FAA, as you know, oversees not only air traffic control, but it contributes to the funding of our airports, uh, the certification of aircraft and airmen, safety oversight, and a number of other um, important responsibilities. As I said, the FAA has to be periodically reauthorized, and this money that is in the trust fund actually has to be budgeted for the FAA to use. The current authorization for the FAA expires under uh, a reauthorization, not a reauthorization, but an extension of the previous authorization until March 31st of 2018. We've had these continuing resolutions before for multiple years, and the current resolution uh, through March was only a six-month extension. One year before that, 
a short period before that, sometimes we had 23 temporary extensions of the funding system. So right now what we are in need of is a long-term reliable funding program for the FAA so that we can continue the modernization of the system called NextGen and continue to operate the safest, most efficient, most complex, diverse aviation system in the world. There are two bills pending right now. They both have been passed by committees but have not gone to the floor of either the Senate or the House. The Senate version is Senate Bill 1405. It reauthorizes the FAA for four years. It improves the transition to next gen. It improves aircraft certification process and drone oversight. It protects, it has protections for passengers, for contract towers, and for rural air service, and expands the ability for airports to use their passenger facility charges to build new towers. The other bill, the House bill, H.R. 2997, is the bill that I think has the most controversy in it and the one I really want to spend some time on today. There are many similar protections in this for passengers. It is also a six-year authorization. It maintains the current tax system on fuel and passenger taxes and so forth as a funding source for the Aviation Trust Fund. However, it removes the air traffic organization that is the control and oversight of our national airspace system out of the hands of the FAA. It takes billions of dollars worth of federal assets that have already been paid for by the taxpayers from FAA and from con congressional oversight and creates a nonprofit corporation with a board of directors that will be funded by user fees. <coughs> Now this is not a new idea. For about 20 years, the airlines have been trying to gather control, gain control of the air traffic control system in order to use it for their own benefit and their own profitability. All of the studies that have been done by the gov various government agencies uh, about this particular proposal have shown that it will increase the cost of administering the air traffic control system and monitoring the system. It will cause a multi-year delay in modernization and restructuring and implementing of next gen, the modernization of the system. And we, business aviation operators and general aviation operators, are especially concerned about the access challenges that this new board might present to general aviation for airspace and for airports. We have experience with these privatized systems in other countries around the world, so we know by experience what problems this can create. First of all, general aviation in the United States operates out of about 5,000 public use airports. About 500 of these airports have some kind of commercial air service, but 70% of all commercial air service operates out of only 35 airports. This new board of directors will have a majority of airline interest and airline related interests in charge, eight seats out of the 13. And general aviation will be given only two seats, one for business aviation, one for general aviation, the users of your Prescott Airport and the students at Embry-Riddle and so forth. As I said, business aviation has experience overseas. We know that when a privatized corporation takes over air traffic, especially if the primary interest is to make a profit or even to break even under a nonprofit status, and when the airlines are in control of that, the general aviation has restricted access by way of times of day, by preferred routes, by preferred times for takeoffs and landings at those airports. So we believe this would be a bad move, a really bad thing for general aviation, and a bad thing for the Prescott Airport and for the state of Arizona. As you know, Prescott Airport air traffic control, while you do have a federally operated tower here, it's dependent on the aircraft once they leave the tower environment to be able to access the national system. And that is controlled from Phoenix right now and from Albuquerque. So we think that the primary funding, the staffing, the improvement in the facilities and so forth will actually go to the airlines and that we will end up with an air traffic system that is built specifically for the airlines and put general aviation at a disadvantage. <coughs> what I'm asking is if the members of this council 
and you, Mayor Oberg, would consider writing a letter to Congress, to your congressional representative, and let them know that H.R. 2997 is not a good bill. We think that the air traffic system in the United States is a public asset and it should remain in the hands of the public and oversight of Congress. This new corporation would not have to answer to Congress. If any user, such as an owner of an airport or an operator of a system, was unhappy with decisions made by this board of directors, the only recourse they would have would be to write a letter to the Secretary of Transportation, and the only consideration she can make as to whether or not that was a good or a bad decision will be based on safety and safety alone. Efficiency and cost will have nothing to do with it. So it really will put you at a, at a disadvantage as a general aviation airport. So we're asking you to oppose H.R. 2997. And um, as I said, the funding will run out on March 31st. Right now, the Congress is very concerned about the budget and other things. But after the first of the year, we're, we're confident that the chairman of the committee will bring this back up and want to try to get this bill, H.R. 2997, to the floor for a vote. Okay, um, city manager, can we put, put together a letter? We certainly can if you could get us the specifics of what you'd like in it. Have um, you got an executive summary or something you can give yeah, us? Yeah, we off could of? exchange, uh, I could get a business card and you could send it to my email. Thank you, Mayor Oberg. I appreciate that. And the manager, I will get uh, some sample letters and some details about the bill, too. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. And Mayor Pro Tim has a question or comment. Thank, thank you very much for your presentation. Relevant to the public health and safety of the city of Prescott, relevant to the fire situation in the city of Prescott, Re relevant to our association with Embry-Riddle and uh, being a major economic uh, development engine within the city, relevant to the fact that Embry-Riddle trains a immeasurable number of pilots for United States Armed Services with regards to our borders and being involved in cybersecurity and all the other things that this community has forwarded. Um, number one, as one council member, I appreciate the FAA. I appreciate who the FAA is. I appreciate everything the FAA has done on behalf of the city of Prescott to elevate our airport. Uh, has worked with us regards, with regards to our runway, has worked with us regards to uh, infrastructure, et cetera. So you can count on this council moving something forward. The new council being seated, every one of them supports the airport. So I think the manager got the instruction loud and clear. He did. Councilwoman Orr. Yes, I just have a quick question. Are you working with AOPA? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. We're working very closely with uh, AOPA. Um, they are partners with us in this move, and there actually is um, a website that AOPA and NBAA and other uh, General Aviation Manufacturers Association, the National Air Transportation Association, and other uh, associations have funded is called ATC Not For Sale. ATC Not For Sale. If you put that in, it'll bring up, uh, bring up that website at the top of the list. And uh, you, members of the council and citizens of Prescott, can send uh, a letter to Congress through that website or even leave a voicemail message. We also have a very active private pilots group out at the airport. I'm sure you're Ted Rickstrom. Yes. 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 Thank Any you. Other questions, comments from the council? <coughs> Thank you, ma'am, for <coughs> making us aware of this. We'll definitely support you. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Item 8C. The opioid epidemic information and how to help. I have to raise this up a little bit. Hello, uh, council members. Um, I'd like to start by uh, saying thank you uh, for allowing me to speak at this panel. Sorry, I gave my papers in order here. Um, my name is Joey, and I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA, uh, as well as the Opioid Harm Reduction Coordinator for Yavapai County Community Health Services. Uh, I know that's a mouthful. Um, but I'm here today to briefly talk about the opioid epidemic and to inform you all about how this uh, town can get involved. Nowadays, the opioid epidemic uh, is a pretty hot topic issue. 
As many of you all know, in June, Governor Ducey declared a state of emergency over the opioid epidemic, and just recently, President Trump declared the opioid crisis a health emergency. This is partly because nationally, the numbers are quite shocking. Uh, the United States accounts for around 5% of the world's population, but it consumes 80% of the world's uh, opioid supply. In 2016, this translates to 431 million opioid pills were prescribed, which is enough to give every man, woman, and child in Arizona a two and a half week supply of opioids. Uh, the reason this is so significant is because four out of five, or 80% of new heroin users started by abusing prescription painkillers. Um, also, heroin deaths in the state of Arizona have tripled since 2012. Um, how this translates nationally is that 90 people die a day from opioid overdose, uh, or to break that down, every 16 minutes somebody dies from opioid overdose in the United States. Uh, in Arizona, this tends to be around four people per day. And projections made by STAT, um, an academic public health database, uh, if nothing is done, the opioid epidemic could take up to 500,000 lives nationally over the next decade, and in 2016, Overdose was a leading cause of accidental death in the United States, uh, just beating car accidents. So I know that these statistics released by the Arizona Department of Health Services and STAT are pretty bleak, but there are ways to help. And one way is this. Yavapai County Community Health Services, in partnership with Sonoran Prevention Works, uh, has pitched the Naloxone Safe Space Initiative. Uh, naloxone is the overdose reversal drug, also known as Narcan, uh, that has been around since the 1960s. Uh, naloxone is safe and cannot kill somebody. Uh, actually, it only works if opioids are in somebody's system. So if you give it to somebody who's drunk, it's probably not going to do anything. Uh, they probably wish it sober them up a little bit. Um, and how it works is it takes the person overdosing into instant withdrawal. Um, this idea is so that local businesses can carry naloxone and display this window cling so that the public knows where naloxone is available in an emergency situation, uh, similarly to that of an AED. Uh, for heart attack victims. Uh, the naloxone safe space materials are free of cost to businesses, and Yavapai County Community Health Services, as well as Sonoran Prevention Works, would provide all materials needed. Uh, further, with the governor's state of emergency, uh, naloxone availability is encouraged and legal. Um, the overall aim of the naloxone safe space has three parts. One, to save lives and to give opioid users another chance at this life. Two, to increase the amount of publicly available naloxone, uh, which in return would hopefully decrease the uh, first responder burnout rate. Um, and three, decrease the stigma against opioid users. Um, is there Arizona Department of Health Services has recently found that uh, the majority of people at risk for opioid overdose are white men over the age of 55. Uh, this is partly due because people who have been taking opioids since the 1990s especially with the introduction of OxyContin in 1998, uh, have to keep upping the dose uh, every X amount of years. If a doctor mispre <laughs> misprescribes something, then they're likely to withdraw, um, or sorry, not withdrawal, overdose. Um, so I'll conclude with this, is that together we have a better chance to save lives and fight the opiate epidemic. Um, if you or any businesses uh, in Prescott are interested in participating in the Naloxone Safe Space Initiative or any opioid victim support group in the town, please feel free uh, to talk to me after this town hall meeting. Um, the opioid epidemic will be long and cost many lives. Uh, the numbers don't appear to be getting better uh, anytime soon, but together we can give Arizonans another chance, and together we can save lives. Thank you. Question comments from the council? Very well done. Thank you. All right. Hey, Brooke, Tim, is this something that should probably be looked at by the Chamber of Commerce? I, I was thinking about that. Um, you know, number one, I'll put one of those in my window. Okay. You can bring it by to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to I'm down there on Main Street, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but I think here again, because the Chamber of Commerce is so instrumentally involved in everything we do here in the city of Prescott, they, they actually serve over 5,000 workers in the city. We don't have that many businesses, but they do serve that many people who work. Mm. And I would think it would be something that the Chamber of Commerce should be interested in hearing. And having said that, it just so happens I know the director of the Chamber of Commerce. So I, I will, I will uh, see if I can get a presentation for the board. Oh, wonderful. Thanks. I can give you my business card if you'd like. That's um, fine. I'm sure that we have it. Isn't that right? I don't know that we do. But we can. No. I just moved here in August, so. Okay, then you can leave it. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I Thank think you. right now the Chamber of Commerce has almost 1,000 members, so oh, you'd be getting to 1,000 businesses. Thanks. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Move on to the consent agenda. Item A, approval of draft minutes listed in the agenda. Item B, adopt ordinance number 5049-1589, authorizing the granting of a utility easement to Arizona Public Service Company in Arizona Corporation and authorizing the mayor and staff to execute any and all documents to effectuate said easement. Item C, award of city contract <coughs> number 2018-096 to Xylem Incorporated in amount not to exceed $59,198.13. Item D, adopt resolution number 4403-1612, authorizing the city of Prescott to enter into amendment number one to an intergovernmental agreement with the state of Arizona through its Department of Transportation, specifying updated provisions of the IGA and authorizing the mayor and staff to take any and all steps necessary to accomplish the above. Item E, award of city contract number 2018-101 with Arizona Public Service Incorporated for providing electric service and utility relocation for the State Route 89 widening project. Item F, adopt resolution number 4404-1613 to approve to approve an annual incentive and retention bonus to military members and authorizing the mayor and staff to take any and all steps necessary to accomplish the above. Item G, approval of community service agreement with Arizona Crisis Team. Item H, adopt ordinance number 5048-1588 relating to the transaction privilege, privilege and use tax amending the city tax code by increasing the transaction privilege and use tax rate from 2% to 2 and 3 quarters percent providing penalties for the violation thereof, providing for severability, designating an effective date, and making provision for existing contracts. Item I, adoption of adopt resolution number 4406-1650-15 will allow transfer of surplus fire department non-compliant self-contained breathing apparatus to Mexico via the Inf Environmental Protection Aid Agency Border 2020 program. Adopt resolution deeming certain city-owned personal property as surplus and of nominal monetary value and authorizing the city manager to dispose of such property. Item J, adopt resolution 4405-1614, adopting a council policy regarding contracts with the city by public officers and employees of the city. Item K, approve amendment number one to agreement for potable water with the Numbers Family LLC, successor to Marie L. Numbers, for a condominium project at 130 North Cortez Street. Item L, approval of amendment number one to agreement for potable water with Rocks Investments LLC for a multi-family project located at 130 North Granite Street. Thank you. Um, I've been asked to pull items I, K, and L for further discussion. Is there any other items the council would like to have pulled? I'd like to pull item F for further yep. discussion. Rocks. F. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> you have a motion. <coughs> Nobody wants to do this. Mayor, I move right. that uh, <laughs> we approve all um, items on the consent agenda except those which have been requested to be pulled. Except for F, I, K, and L. Second. second. Okay, I have a second. motion to second vote, please. Pass the seven zero. Okay, we'll start with uh, item F. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, this is an item to uh, approve a military incentive and retention bonus for employees who are serving in the military, such as the National Guard or Reserve. And while I support the military and anyone who wants to serve in the military, I think giving them a bonus is unfair to all the other employees who have to fill in and do their jobs when, they, when the military are called to duty. Uh, being in the military is voluntary now. It's, we don't have a draft, so 
these people, these employees who chose to go into the military did so knowing that um, they would have extra duty. They do get paid for it. They do have more generous uh, health benefits. And what this is really about is giving them a health insurance subsidy because they're giving up uh, their health insurance plan with the city and they're not paying that premium. They're saving the city a little bit of money, but they're getting a better health plan. And that in itself is a violation of the contract between the city and the employee benefit trust, which I think is wrong. Uh, it may not be, I think it's questionable whether it's, it violates the gift clause of our constitution. But to me, the bottom line is that it's just plain unfair to the other employees who don't get bonuses. Uh, we have employees who have special training and are excellent employees, and they don't get bonuses <coughs> for doing that. So I'm opposed to this, and unless we give all employees a bonus based on performance and special skills. Well, as a former uh, reservist, I can tell you that uh, I think anybody that's willing to serve the country, uh, either as a full-time person or a, a reservist, um, has to do a lot of uh, work over and above uh, a lot of other people. I can tell you that uh, when I was stationed in Alaska, I was stationed, you know, stationed Fairbanks. I had to drive to um, Anchorage for my drills. I had to get up at 10 o'clock at night to be there by 7 in the morning to stand 7.30 drill. And then when I got off at uh, 5.30 after drill uh, on Sunday, then I, had, I didn't get home to 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And many times when I went down there, I mean, nobody pays you to go there. It's totally out of your pocket going down and back. And by the way, when you're down there, you got to put your, yourself up in a room. Nobody puts you up in a room. And uh, so I think a lot of these people go above and beyond to serve our country, and I, I personally uh, would vote yes on this. Councilwoman Orr. Uh, yes, Mayor, I would like to uh, express my agreement with you. Uh, this is, in, in my opinion, it's a way to recognize and thank our individuals who are willing to serve. Um, you know, they could be called tomorrow. And uh, Mary, I'd just like to ask, I forgot, how many employees are we talking about that receive? We have nine employees. Nine employees. And, and I just, I think it's a good thing that the city does to appreciate their service. And, uh, and so I'm certainly uh, in full support of this. Motion. Other questions, comments on F? Do you have a motion? Sure, Mayor, I uh, make a motion to adopt resolution 4404-1613 for military incentive and retention bonus. Second. I have a motion and a second vote, please. Passes 6-1. Thank you. We'll move on to I. All right. I asked that this to be pulled for one basic reason, and that was to show the commitment that we have to helping our neighbors to the south, that being Mexico. Um, fact of the matter is they don't have the same kind of equipment or the ability to get some of the same equipment we do, and the material that we have is... Um, not bad, it just doesn't meet the standards we're required to have. And um, sometimes Prescott doesn't go out and pat itself on the back enough for a lot of the good things we do. There's a lot of good things we do, and this is one of them. And I wanted to make the public aware this is something that we're doing and just to sweep it under the carpet and put it on a consent agenda and not have it out there as to what we're actually accomplishing, I thought was wrong. So that's why I did it. Chief Light, would you like to respond or add your comments? No, I, I would just add that uh, in our fiscal prudence, I think we went ahead and were very uh, judicious in the sense that we went and tried to get some tangible value out of the equipment that we are surplusing. Uh, the net result uh, for six packs was $350 and uh, probably many more hours of staff time involved to try to excise these somewhere uh, in need. Uh, so we proceeded with the process of going through Border 2020 and the EPA to excise these to Mexico, and I think it's a win-win both for the community of Prescott and for our neighbors to the south. 
other comments, questions from the council? Do you have a motion? Mayor, I move for the adoption of a resolution number 4406-1615. Um, second. Do you have a motion and a second vote, please? Passes 7-0. Move on to K. Okay, again, uh, here again, um, following our general plan and planning direction by, by this council with regards to trying to get some redevelopment of the downtown area with, with residential property and opportunities for people to work, live, and play where, where in the community they live. Um, here again, I, I just oppose putting this on a consent agenda without letting the public understand why we're making this available, why we're doing it now, and it has to do with us trying to get the downtown area redeveloped. Mm -hmm. And with that, I would make the motion approval of amendment number one to agreement for potable water city contract number 2017-198A-1 with the numbers family LLC. Second. second. A motion and second vote, please. Pass the seven zero. Item L. I also asked that one be pulled for the exact same reason. Um, here again, if you look at what we're trying to accomplish with redevelopment in the downtown and provide housing that's more than affordable, or, or at least affordable for people that live here in the downtown area, um, I think folks need to know that we're doing exactly what we said we would do. And uh, this is one of those cases where I didn't want, again, just to be put on a consent agenda and run through this without saying, hey, look, we're doing something here uh, according to what we said we'd be doing in the downtown area and providing opportunity for people to live in the city. So with that, I would uh, move to approve amendment number one, uh, the agreement for potable water to city contract number. Yeah, we got one question or comment over here. Actually, I, I want to make a second mm -hmm. when he's done, and then I have a comment. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you for the second. Great. And my comment, as I know, Elaine Earl is in the, in the audience and Rock Earl, and I just appreciate so much what they have done for the city of Prescott with Prescott Living Magazine. Uh, they are moving parts of their business to Prescott, and they've just done an, an excellent job of helping, helping our city in so many ways with economic development and publicity. So, Elaine, I just want to publicly thank you and Rock for that. Thank you for that, Councilwoman. Um, you know, they're willing to invest their hard-earned money in helping move this community forward in a direction that we called for in our general plan, not once, but twice, by overwhelming majority of the public. So, and they're also bringing their family here next year, so it's wonderful news. All right, so I'll finish that, right? Potable Water City Limit Contract Number 2017-085A-1 with Rocks Investments, LLC for a multi-family project on APN 113-15-035A located at 130 North Granite Street. Second. I have a motion and a second vote, please. Passes 7-0. Thank you. We'll on the liquor license agenda. Public hearing and consideration for an acquisition of control for your Series 6 bar liquor license from Greg Gregory Paydock, applicant for the club at Prescott Lakes, located at 315 East Smoke Tree Lane. Mayor and Council, this application has been determined to be in compliance with the city requirements and being recommended for approval. The applicant application fee has been paid. The application has been posted at the location for the required 20 days. We have received no public comments, and I believe Mr. Paydock is present to answer any questions you may have. Come on down. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about this request? It's just a uh, change of uh, the person who's, uh, it's the same owners, but the person whose name was on the liquor license is no longer with us, so they're changing it over to my name. Okay, and that's at uh, Prescott Lakes at Club? The club at, yeah, yes, at the club at Prescott Lakes. Okay. Yeah. Any questions, comments for the council? Steve? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Any comments from the public? 
Uh -huh. Got a thumbs up, okay. Do I have a motion? Mayor, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. A motion to second vote, please. Passes 7-0. You have a second motion? Mayor, I move to approve. Recommendation for liquor license application number 06130092 for an acquisition of control for series 06 bar life, liquor license for the club at Prescott Lakes located at 315 East Smoke Tree Lane. Second. A motion to second vote, please. Passes 7 0. Move on to regular agenda. Item 11A, award of city contract with Lion Engineering for design and other engineering services for the Sundog Trunk Main Phase C project. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, my name is Steve Orrows of Public Works. Uh, this item is uh, the detail that uh, Craig was describing earlier in their work study session. Uh, this is for the segment of the Sundog Trunk Main that's between the VA to the west to Miller Valley. It's a total of 12,000 lineal feet of pipe uh, through that area and then about 1,600 lineal feet going up Miller Valley. Uh, the purpose of the uh, improvement is to address deficiencies in the, the uh, collection system in that reach. Uh, many of the, uh, a major part of this project is in the creeks, which uh, doesn't mix with uh, sewage. So uh, the project is very uh, needed and timely. Uh, Lion Engineering uh, performed the uh, preliminary engineering on the uh, whole trunk main phase, which is now broken up into three phases and two lift stations. And the 40-year-old infrastructure is in need of uh, replacement and upsizing. Uh, they were chosen to finish the design uh, based on their performance and uh, unique knowledge of uh, the previous work. Uh, it'll take about a year to finish the design uh, next uh, August to uh, fall and then about 18 months to do the construction. So the construction dollars are forecast to go out through uh, or into fiscal year 20. The estimated construction cost of the project is about $7 million and uh, that is in the five-year capital program in uh, next fiscal year and the year after. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. How much question from the council? Any from the public? <coughs> you have a motion? <coughs> Mayor, I move to approve city contract number 2018-066. Second. I have a motion and a second vote, please. Passes 7-0. Thank you. Item B. Um, afternoon again, Mayor and Council. Ian Mattingly, City Traffic Engineer. Um, this item is for um, the establishment of a new standing committee with a focus on pedestrian, bicycle, and traffic issues. It formalizes the mayor's ad hoc bicycle and pedestrian, pedestrian advisory committee and it expands its scope to include additional items on uh, traffic congestion, uh, management um, requests, et cetera. The committee will be made up of seven members, um, residents of Prescott, and who will represent diverse backgrounds and experiences. They will be selected through the committee application process. And uh, the committee will primarily advise city council and staff on the following items, reviewing plans and projects that impact pedestrian, bicycle, and traffic issues, developing, developing proposals for improving safety, accessibility, and connectivity, identifying new funding sources to accomplish these goals, and lastly, providing recommendations on matters related to traffic and traffic safety brought to them either through uh, by city council, um, staff, or the public. Um, public Works staff will assist the group by providing um, attendance at the meetings, um, doing minutes, and then providing technical um, advice on issues that come up. Um, this is similar, we have had a similar committee like this in the past. Um, it uh, was sunsetted in 2010. Um, this combines basically the, the old the uh, bike standing committee and the traffic committee we had in the past and makes it one committee. And uh, we are recommending, staff is recommending that uh, existing membership of the bike and pedestrian ad hoc committee be considered or offered positions to fill some of those um, open positions. Um, I believe there's 
approximately three members or three or four members of the ad hoc committee who would uh, be interested in doing that. Um, with that, I'd answer any questions. Yep, oh, she beat you. Uh, <laughs> Councilwoman Wilcox. Uh, Ian, on our uh, DS this afternoon, there was a copy of the resolution, and in our packet, there was a resolution. Are they the same thing? Yeah, the resolution is the same. I noticed that when I checked for it, that it, it looked like it was missing. Oh, okay. um, we got yeah, it. but that yeah, it's forty four oh seven. I All think sixteen right. sixteen. Yeah, that should be it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep. Pro Tim. Uh, thank you, um, Ian. The the members that are requesting um, reappointment or reassignment um, are they long-standing members that may not have been subject to the same guidelines as the uh, new members um, now with boards and commissions with state law? Yeah. So so the intent would be anyone that was on the committee who is a resident of Prescott that only certain ones could be there. Um, they would fill out the application form. That, that all um, applicants for a standing committee would go through, go through the same process. Okay, Just sorry. that we would kind of extend that offer to them to, to submit. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Councilman Mozell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ian, I just, this is, I don't know if it's rhetorical or just a question I wanted out there. Bike traffic is traffic, correct? Yes. Bicycles obey the same laws as vehicles. Yes. Correct, when they're mm -hmm. on the road? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it. I, I've got a problem when we segment this one part of, of, of our traffic, and this is my own analysis over the past month since I knew this was coming. Nine out of ten bicyclists I see on the road, if I did the same thing in a car, I'd kill somebody or I'd get a ticket. They run traffic lights. They run stop signs. They cut in and out of traffic. And I'd like to see that addressed before we, we give this any credibility. Secondly, is this not the same committee, less traffic, that approved a painting for safe roads to, to school? Not, what, eight years ago, six years ago? Do I remember that right? Didn't it come from the same committee? Okay, then I'm in error of that. But um, I just, you know, pedestrian and traffic, if, if bicycles are traffic, then they go over with the cars, and, and, and I think it should be pedestrian and traffic. So that's my say. Uh, yeah, and, and my only comment would be I think the intent is just to, to make a title that was all-inclusive of the modes of transportation. Um, we don't say transit, but that would be included. Well, what so about wheelchairs and accessibility? The, yeah, we can't. It's just, a, it's just a title, but all those modes of transportation, <laughs> including transit, um, you know, accessibility issues, all those things, they're included in there. I mean. So we're not, we're not really, we're trying to say that all these things do relate. And so why have multiple committees that separate them out like we did in the past? You might as well include traffic and just, just have all that thing talked to together because the, that's really what we need to look at is when a project comes in or someone has an issue, we got to look at all those things together. So that, that was the intent, not, not anything else. Councilwoman Orr? Yeah, this particular committee has been in existence now since Mayor, since you created the ad hoc committee and um, I know you, when you first asked me if I would be the liaison on that I thought well, I don't know I will tell you it's probably one of the committees that I've learned so much about the city and uh, they have worked very hard I believe Ian that you would probably agree with me that they have saved the city money they have helped us improve um, educate that's been uh, one of their main goals to, to help educate some of the things that you're talking about Greg and I, I see Bill Finelli, who has been the chairman, is in the audience. And I would just like to commend, and when the, the mayor mentioned a traffic committee, it just seemed only reasonable to not be redundant and to add traffic to the bicycle pedestrian traffic committees because they address so many of those issues. So I, I would just like to give a, a thumbs up to what they've done because, and Sandra Smith is, in the audience, she's also been, and then Sandy's back there, she's there with, with public transit, so it's, it's a quite a dynamic committee. We have many folks that come every month and they sit around the room and they also give input, so I believe the city has really gained by their participation. Go ahead, Councilman Blair. 
this committee is just advisory to the council, correct? Yeah. Yes, advisory. Mm -hmm. So the difference between the committee the mayor put together and the, the committee that we're talking about today would not evaporate when the mayor leaves? Right. Yes, so yes. It will be a standing committee? That's, that's what's being proposed, a standing committee that will run. Is that why we're doing this? Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just Part of it. Have, Part of it. Have continuity in, in all Formalizing it. I think that's a fair yeah. enough statement. But yeah. to go back to Greg's comment, it was an ADOT grant for the mural for safe routes to school that came through the bicycle committee. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was, which was a pathetic thing in my opinion. Well, there's not much of uh, the public left here, but uh, for those that are here, let me go ahead and explain what happens. Uh, when I became mayor, uh, I was asked by uh, Councilwoman Wilcox if I would set up a um, standing committee on uh, bicycle and pedestrian. Uh, I, I did set up a, an ad hoc committee. I didn't feel that we needed a standing committee at the time. And uh, when I, of course, in my term and 13 days in a wake up, um, what happens is that committee goes away because it only is you know, <coughs> available as long as I'm still uh, serving. So um, we've had a lot of comments recently on traffic and uh, so I felt that it's time for us to also start looking at traffic and trying to come up with some solutions to some of the traffic problems we see coming up and the density that we're starting to experience. And um, it just seemed uh, logical to go ahead and make one committee they had traffic, pedestrian, and bicycle all together. And um, so I'm hoping that uh, we can approve this. And I, I agree with uh, Councilman Lazell. I see a lot of irresponsible people on bicycles. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we can try and educate them. I'm not sure that's going to work, but uh, we can sure try. Uh, but uh, again, you know, we have to realize these people are working for the city. Uh, they represent us. Uh, they advise us. Um, many of them are not highly experienced, and that's one reason why I'm asking the city manager to take a look at a, a, a request for proposal for a highway uh, evaluation to be done so that it can be used to advise this group and give them some direction on how they might want to move forward on trying to get things done in uh, traffic management. So um, hopefully uh, we can move this for forward, and I think it, one more person's chimed in here, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, <clears throat> like Blair, I was on the council at the time, and the Safe Routes to School grant was intended on just that. It was to, and we applied for the grant, we got the grant. It was recommended that we go get this grant to help, and the intent at the time was to um, do things that would help people go to school safer. And the part of that had to do with painting crosswalks, part of it had to do with painting stop signs, part of that had to do with this, that, and the other thing. And somebody took that out of context, not being city, but at the school and approved using the money for painting the mural. That's how that happened, if that's what you're referring to, Councilman Blair. So, yeah, the Bicycle Committee didn't do that per se. They made the recommendation that we go get the money. They made the grant. We got the money, but... They're not the ones that actually laid it out. Somebody on the school at that time, it's no longer here, approved that money be spent that way. Any other questions, comments? Whoops, got one there. Okay. I, I just want to make, make sure that everybody understands that the current bicycle pedestrian committee that's in place had nothing to, they, they had no affiliation Absolutely. with that group. I just Absolutely. really think that's important. And Bill, I don't know if you might like to address the council or? You know, I heard the earlier meeting on my phone driving over and it cut out driving through the Dells. So I wish I could have responded. The, the recommendation that we made, number one, just for two seconds, on why we should maybe, why we said, hey, let's have a path and a road. Not that we really wanted both. The concerns were at the time we looked at it, which was back early October, actually September. Um, the path definition could have been just a sidewalk, and it could be a sidewalk that goes along driveways, for example. So. If that's the place where you want people to ride bikes, people are backing their cars out, for example. If there's multiple crossings of multi-use paths, it's, that's quite dangerous. So really, without having specifics as to what's going to happen, we said, well, maybe ask for both. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just, just a quick answer on that. Um, the, as uh, 
uh, Councilwoman Orr said, the, the, the group has really been very active. We have three now. That we have four members, but one of them is not a resident, so he will not be able to go forward. Um, and certainly we will need traffic expertise. And so I believe the, the previous traffic committee was able to find folks that were retired that had that type of expertise. We'd certainly look forward to having that on the committee as well. Um, we're with you 100%. Number one, it's the committee that looks out for the city of Prescott, right? It's not committee, it's not a bike advocacy committee by any means. And so we've worked very collaboratively with city staff. The idea is stretch the dollars. When we say, hey, we're recommending maybe we should do some striping, we wait until it's time for the roads to be striped. We don't say go out and you know spend a bunch of dough just for bikes because it's not realistic. And so that's the type of kind of a, our philosophy is to be pragmatic and understand what the goals are. But improving this scenario here for biking for folks, boost tourism is gonna to help get more young folks wanting to live here for hopefully the jobs that we're gonna be able to create. And there's a bunch of folks today who use it for transportation. So eventually, if the widening of 69 happens, for example, and there's a safe way for people to commute back and forth between Prescott and Prescott Valley, those are the types of things that are very important and it'll really help the city out a lot. So thanks for your support. Thank you. Any other further uh, public comment? Good afternoon, my name is Daniel Matson. I just wanted to point, first off, I, I definitely think that uh, making this a standing committee is a good idea um, because it does encompass, you know, mass transit. I'm with the Albopie Regional Transits Board as uh, she, Stacy, or Sandy, Sandy is our uh, uh, transit manager. I don't know what we'd do without her. I, I, that's not the first time I've made a mistake on her name. Uh, and I just want what he just said about the path between Prescott and Prescott Valley. A very dear friend of mine riding a bicycle along Highway 69 was killed right in front of her son on uh, Labor Day. And uh, she was going the wrong direction, but she was still in the bike path and a driver crossed over the line into the path. Uh, we do need to not only... Uh, uh, educate bike riders but also uh, um, people who use the roads and I definitely think it's a good idea to early on in the planning process uh, come up with ways to try to make things safer. safer. Um, my very good friend uh, Valerie Creek uh, was killed right in front of her 16 year old son who was also riding behind her. Uh, she did a lot for the, the homeless community. She volunteered in a lot of nonprofits, and uh, it was quite a loss for the city, even though it was in the Diamond Valley area. Um, she did ride her bicycle uh, in Prescott quite a bit, and I think it's important that we pay attention to bicycle safety, and I think this committee is a good way to move that way. Thank you. Any further comment? Do you have a motion? May I move to approve resolution number 4407-1616. Second. second. A motion and second vote, please. Passes 6-1. Item C. Approval of the official canvas of the City of Prescott general election held on November 7th, 2017. Mayor and Council, before you is the election results to count that to canvas the 2017 general election. And at the time of printing the council agenda packet, I hadn't received the results yet from Yavapai County Elections Department. So I now have shared a copy with you is here on the dais. And per state law, the election results have to be canvassed no earlier than six days and not more than 20 days after the election. The general election had five candidates running for three seats on council and two candidates running for the mayoral seat. After the election results came in, Greg Mangarelli won the majority of votes for the mayor's seat and Steve Blair, <coughs> Phil Good, and Alexa <coughs> Scholl won the majority of votes for the three council member seats. The city had a 59.5% turnout with 17,153 citizens turning in ballots the cost of the general election was approximately $72,000, and the new mayor and council members will be taking their seats at the November 28th voting meeting. And please let me know if you have any questions. Questions, comments from the council? Any from the public? Do you have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve the official canvas of the city of Prescott general election held on November 7th, 2017. Second. A motion and a second vote, please. 
Passes 7-0. Thank you. For those that are still here, thank you for coming. And uh, it's Miller time, and the founding fathers will have to wait till next time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said. <laughs> it's been a long day. Do you have any questions?